it is six o'clock and we're here to welcome the debut book from Matthew Matthew Martinez called <laughs> The Sock That Went On Deployment. Congratulations, Matthew. We're really excited for you. We have a lot of fun stuff planned for the evening. We have book giveaways and games, and you get to learn about some really cool children's authors. Lydia? Um, I'm Lydia Mann. Um, I publish under L.M. Mann, and I'm half of Texas Sisters Press. Um, and we are super excited to be here with Matthew. Um, he's one of our first um, Texas Sisters press authors to launch a book so we're super excited um and when we first read the sock that went on deployment we just fell in love with the book and we knew we had to help him get this out so i'm going to toss the baton now to um marie you introduce yourself really quick and then we'll toss it to matthew and then back to cj <laughs> okay Hi, I'm Marie Whitaker. I'm the creator of the Adventures of Lola Hopscotch book series for children. Um, I am not in Texas. I'm in Colorado where it's a little bit cold, so I'm all bundled up. But I just wanted to tell Matt congratulations on his launch. That's pretty cool. Um, kids books are really where it's at for me. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Matt, take it away. Now, just a brief introduction. That's all you get. <laughs> I got you. Um, you. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm Matthew. Uh, this is my first book. I've been working on this probably about uh, three, four years now while I was deployed, just kind of on a notepad. And um, I'm, I'm really grateful and thankful that um, I have a great personnel to help me get this out uh, and reach other kids and other military families like myself. Super, super awesome. All right, CJ, are you ready to uh, tell us a little bit about your <laughs> children's books? Yes. Um, I have Chief and Sarge cruising. Um, we take these little guys, Chief is the koala, Sarge is the monkey, on places all over, um, in and out of the country. Their first book is cruising, and there are pictures where we literally took them on a cruise ship and took them down the water slide and had all sorts of fun. So the pictures in the books are pictures from the trips that have been cartooned. And it allows your children to go on adventures, a little one in your life, go on adventures that they may not otherwise get a chance to do. The beauty of Chief and Sarge is they can get into all sorts of places that kids normally can't. And all sorts of trouble that kids probably shouldn't be doing. So they're a little on the naughty side, um, but they have a lot of fun. And so that's where Cruising Chief and Sarge, and this is the book I'll be giving away tonight. So, yeah. yay. <laughs> so, congratulations, Matthew. Thank you. I'm super excited. We're going to start with Marie tonight. Marie, why don't you go ahead and take about 10 minutes, kind of talk about you, talk about Lola Hopscotch, and we'll go from there. Okay. So I got the idea to start writing about Lola Hopscotch because I received a gift. I don't know if you can see her there. This is Lola Hopscotch, and this was a gift that I received from my, um, my boyfriend while we were in San Francisco and it didn't take very long we we bought her at a store called Lola it didn't take very long and I came up with a last name for her so she's Lola Hopscotch and then I decided that she needed to be kind of a a social warrior for little kids because I feel that little kids sometimes are afraid to talk to their adults about challenging social issues like bullying and so bullying is I mean it's um, it's a cause that's that's near and dear to my heart so I decided when I wrote the first book, which I don't know, can you guys see that there? Hold it right in front of you, <laughs> like right in front of you like there that. Okay, <laughs> so um, this is Lola Hopscotch in the first day of school. This is book one, and this is the book that I'm going to be giving away today. Um, this one deals directly with bullying. It's got a strong communication hook where um, adults can read it to their kids and it prompts them to talk about how things are going in school and what happened and who did they meet and things like that. So that's sort of the theme with the whole series. Um, just on October 1st, three days ago, we launched the second book and it's, I don't know if you can see my, see my little background there. This is Lola Hopscotch and the Spookaroo. That's what this art is. And book two um, deals with how to help when there's a lost child. And it's also, I couldn't help but have a book set around Halloween because it's my favorite holiday. Um, so my, 
my illustrator, her name is Lily Wavell. She is phenomenal. Um, I got really lucky and you can see here her art is amazing. So yeah, that's, um, that's it for book two. That's the thing for book two. And we are going to be launching um, book three on November 1st. It is set in wintertime. So there's a lot of snowflakes and, and pretty wintertime stuff. Um, and that one, that one deals with new children and how to open up to new children and get them comfortable with adults. And it is called There's a New Kid, Lola Hopscotch. Debuts um, November 1st. That's awesome. So Marie, like how long have you been at this children's book game? I have not been at children's books <laughs> for very long. I am, so as far as genres go, I'm a horror girl. I started writing um, probably about 20 years ago and I have multiple um, short stories out in different anthologies and they're all um, psychological horror, just straight horror. And then I have, um, Four other books out and they are either supernatural thrillers or horror um so stepping over into the realm of child you know children's books i knew it was going to be more of getting the theme out there the anti-bullying theme out there to help little kids and to use um the the creative you know all of the all of the things i learned from from publishing books to try to get get some help for little kids um through through books and then also they're 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 cute you know and they're fun to read and i know after we launched book one i i got a lot of really great feedback from adults who had fun reading them reading the book with their with their kids so it's yeah you're never too old to read children's books as far as I'm <laughs> oh it's wonderful <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I, and i think it was um and y'all correct me if i'm wrong but i think it was dr seuss that said or maybe it was Mr. Rogers, but it said, if, you know, if, if you have a really hard concept, then write it in a children's book. <laughs> so. I'm not sure. Uh, the beauty of how I met Marie was I actually read Lola Hopscotch on the Treehouse, which are the books, children's yes. books that I read with Chief and Sarge. So yeah. one of her books is actually on the Treehouse. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Very, very cool. And you can find the treehouse where, CJ? Oh, on my website, cjpetersonwrites.com. Just go hit the more, go down and find the treehouse. There's lots of books already on there. There's over 30 some on there. So it allows you, and the YouTube link is right below it and lets you read, read books with your children, especially when you're probably tired. You can just cuddle up with them with the YouTube and watch them with Chief and Sarge. Very cool. Very cool. So, first giveaway. First giveaway. Four. So, <laughs> see how well you were paying attention to Miss Marie. Where did Marie get Lola? Oh, where did find a copy of Marie's new book. Do you happen to have it handy? I do. I do. Can you show it? Yep. Oh, get it right in front of your face. Right right your your <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you're kind of disappearing. Get it. I, that's the bad thing mind. about the virtual mind. background. Behind you. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Really here. <laughs> that's okay. That's the problem when you use virtual backgrounds is it, it tends to. Uh, uh, that's why I have a green screen. <laughs> yeah, well, Little Miss Fancy Pants. <laughs> um, so where did Marie get Lola for a signed copy of her? Oh, I think Julie just got it. He did. Miss, would you please retell the audience where you found Lola? I found Lola at a shop called Lola in San Francisco behind Ghirardelli Square. And your boyfriend's the one that got it for you, correct? Yes. Okay. Yep, that was a gift. Miss Julie Connor got it. Good job, Julie. Yay, Julie! <laughs> so, Miss Julie, if you could message me your physical address so she can send it to you, just message it to me on Facebook. Don't put it in the chat. Don't do that. That, or you can email us either way. I think you either have our way. email. Julie's probably got our email. I know she does. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Since she's been sending us stories. <laughs> she's part of our Christmas anthology for Texas Sisters Press. So she definitely has Yeah, super so, excited. Julie, please make sure to email us your address and we will get it to Marie who will get you your signed copy. 
Okay. Congratulations. Yay. Yay. <laughs> okay, let's head over to Miss Lydia. Oh, my turn. Well, if it's my turn, then bam, we're going to go to Magic Cats. <laughs> um, I write for middle grade and I also write for little readers. Um, and I'm going to be giving away um, one of my signed paperbacks tonight. Um, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to let the winner choose whether they would like a paperback copy of Magic Cats, The Adventures of Ramses and Tut. Say, be careful, don't go too hard. I know, I'm like, Ur. well, there, that's Ramses and Tut behind me. Um, or, uh, and, and that's for little readers, um, or if you want something for a, a little bit older audience, I have The Nightmare King, Shadow Dragons 1, which is a fantasy um, for sort of, eh, fifth, sixth grade reading level. So. You know, I've had kids younger than that read it. I've had adults read it, so it's all good. But um, wait, you know, one quick question: Who are Ramses and Tut? Ramses and Tut are magic cats. Yes, but, <laughs> but that's the real the origin. Real, yes, the origin of Ramses and Cat, uh, Ramses and Tut, the real Ramses and Tut, uh, were kitty cats that um, I got for my parents when I moved off to go to graduate school because I didn't want them to have empty nest syndrome because all the children had left by that point. Um, and so I used to call them my little brothers. Um, and so let's see if we can, that, this one's Ram, or this one's Tut and this one's Ramses. Um, and they both lived very long and happy lives. Um, and we, um, you Tut, know. Tut helped me study. He would sit underneath my books and I'd put the book right on top of him. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I got into publishing, um, after sister did, uh, I let little sister kind of blaze the trail. She started in 2012, I think it was. Um, and then I jumped in with the Nightmare King um, originally in 2015. Um, I've since republished the Nightmare King under Texas Sisters Press. Um, and um, so I basically love to be a big kid. Um, in my other life, I work with a, a video company called Camp TV. Um, and I've worked with Camp TV for over 30 years. I started as a very talented toddler. <clears throat> um, and so I make videos for summer camp. So I, you know, during the summer I get to go to camp and have fun and all that, you know. So basically my goal in life is to not grow up. Um, you know, I, I do want to be the Toys R Us kid that never grows up. So, um, and I love to write, um, I love to write to inspire kids to use their imaginations and um, enjoy reading and just, I was one of those kids that could never get enough of reading. Um, especially when I was, well, in, in elementary school, if it didn't have a horse in it, I pretty much didn't want to read it. <laughs> and, uh, so yes, there will be some horse stories coming at some point. Um, she's in touch with the ranch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Um, and so, um, I love sci-fi. I love fantasy. Um, I love British mysteries, um, you know, it, so there's, there's a whole lot more ideas up here than there are out on paper, and I'm sure all of you guys can identify with that. <laughs> um, what else do you want me to talk about? CJ? Well, what did, um, <laughs> what gave you, like, the idea for Ramsey's and Tut, and where did you find your illustrator? Ah, my wonderful, wonderful illustrator is um, Ollie Oliver, OllieIllustrations.com. Um, and I had just had the idea of doing a children's series based around Ramses and Tut. Um, we literally had these cats for, um, we had Ramsey's having internet issues, I think. Yeah, I think we just lost Marie for a minute. Um, we had Ramsey's for like 16 years and we had Tut 20. So, you know, they they were definitely part of our family. So, um, and my our niece and nephew, when they were little, played with the cats all the time. And so that kind of inspired me to want to you know, develop a, ch a children's series on this. And then I looked for the right illustrator for seven years. Um, 
Marie and Matthew can probably nod their heads mm -hmm. in agreement that it's mm -hmm. like you until yeah. you find that right find illustrator right yeah it's like you know how cr critical that is um and um i tell you the the illustrator that worked on matthew's books Svetlana, she's just fabulous and y'all will get to see some of that in a little bit um but um so when i did finally meet um ollie oliver he his real name is dave um but he goes by ollie oliver when he illustrates um he uh he and i hit it off it was like one of those god appointments kismet whatever you want to call it um we just when we met it was like it clicked and it was the timing was right in his life he uh he and his wife had just had a little girl and um so he's a you know he's a new dad so he totally is getting into this children's book stuff and um he's worked with me and a, a couple of other children's authors now and he's working on the sequel for um Ramses and Tut and I told him I said man I want us to I want us to be right there with Pete the cat <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to selling cat books um and if you have little kids and they like cats and you haven't discovered pete the cat you need to because they will totally dig it cool. so. <laughs> well i'm gonna ask you a question now oh okay because i got one for you for those who are watching what book are they gonna get uh whichever one they want they can have uh the nightmare king or magic cats okay well here's the question really kind of an easy one who are Ramses and Tut? Who are Ramses and Tut? <laughs> <laughs> so, let's Marie, see. We lost your video. We lost your video, Marie. So, hopefully she she's able to pop back on because. Well, I um, heard her. That's how I know she's in there. <laughs> she's in there somewhere. She's in there. But, uh, you know, technical difficulties. Please stand by. That's the beauty of live things happen. Yeah. You know, well, yeah. Matthew, can you tell us a little bit more about the succulent one on deployment? Because I know there's a particular. <sighs> I think, I think we just, yeah, Matthew. Oh, talk about, our... <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> lost Marie again, but it's okay. Matthew, talk about. Um, I'm you know, behind the succulent one on deployment. Yeah, kind of, kind of the story behind the story. Right, so um, the sock that went on deployment, um, I really used him um, as a metaphor, I guess, for me. Um, a lot of the struggles that I had, um, you know, being the first one in my family to go to the military, um, leaving my spouse behind, um, and, and a, a lot of the difficulties and, and adversities that I had to go through uh, by myself. Um, actually, the sock comes from an actual sock that I had on deployment uh, while my wife was folding my, uh, my Navy blues um, and my NWUs, um, she misplaced a sock of hers that was in there. So when I was putting the clothes uh, into my rack and ready for deployment, um, I found that sock and, and I really used that sock um, a, as a piece of home. Um, so whenever I had a, a bad day, uh, a long day, or even if I was feeling good, um, I would kind of just hold that sock and kind of just lay with it and, and it, it would bring me closer to home, even though we were a thousand miles apart. Um, and, and that's what I think this book really helps is when I ended up deploying for the second time, my, uh, my son was born about two weeks afterwards. And I read, I read books to him, uh, got recorded. Uh, it's kind of the typical, typical military uh, parent thing to do. Um, but I'd never found a book that I felt like was tailored to him, uh, tailored to our specific situation. Um, and so I wrote it. I, I wrote something that started off as a story for him. Um, my wife absolutely loved it. Um, I loved it. Our family loved it. And we said, well, how come we don't just try to generate this into something for people that are going through the same thing that I went through? Um, because there's always new people enlisting. There's always new people having children uh, and deploying. So why not have a story for them to read to their child, um, to let them and their spouse know that, hey, everything's gonna be fine. Uh, uh, love overpowers distance, you know? Um, it, it's, gonna, it's gonna all come to an end and we're gonna be a whole happy family. Um, and, and that's what this book is really. Um, one thing I like about- I have to- oh, Go ahead, CJ. One thing I like about it, being a military kid myself, is that, you know, if 
if there are people who have friends who have kids in the military and they're friends with you or, or have kids, I'll try that again, families, kids who have parents that are not in the military <laughs> that are friends with kids in the military can know what the kid is going through. It helps kind of bridge that yeah. gap so that exactly. the friend understands what the other friend is going through. Sorry, right. I cut that out, but you got the point. <laughs> No, well, no, no, it's great. Well, and that's what, that's one of the reasons we just fell in love with this book is, um, you know, we've got ties to the military in our family and, um, and what's really ironic and we haven't had a chance to double check with our nephew, but we think that you guys were on the same aircraft carrier. Yeah. <laughs> in the oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so I haven't had a chance to, to double check, but um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, that would, that would even make it even a smaller <laughs> world if that were right. the actual case. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, so what are the Sox names in the story? Uh, so it's going to be um, Robin and Lila. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of just figured that idea um, from a pair of socks that I had um, with active wear socks. There's an R and an L on there. Um, your right uh -huh. foot and left foot. Um, so we kind of just rolled with that and say, hey, what what is a good R name and what's a good L name? Um, that's a little bit different, um, but kind of flows together. Mm -hmm. that's and, and that's how we found that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to jump into mine real quick. So let me change my handy dandy little background. Okay, I'm going to go back to being Texas Sisters Press now. Since uh, <laughs> kind of kind of double representing today. <laughs> there we go. See, yeah. It's, as you can tell, it's all about product placement, you know? Yes, product placement. There we go. <laughs> well, I'm CJ Peterson. Um, CJPetersonWrites.com is where you find all my stuff. Um, I, like Marie, actually am not initially a children's author. Mine are more kind of young adult and adult. They are Christian fiction, but I tell people they're not your mama's Christian fiction. Um, a lot of people tend to enjoy them in some of mine, the spiritual realm crosses into the physical. So where there's dark, there's light, there's angels, there's demons. Um, and the Archangel Michael sends this unit out called Angel, which is available to nurture God's eternal love to help people out into the world. That's my original intent. That was my 2012 start publishing sort of idea. And my characters actually all cross over storyline. So it's kind of neat. Um, this, however, was a complete and utter accident, a happy accident, but an accident nonetheless. Chief and Sarge, and they actually have military ties. My husband's retired Navy senior chief. And when we were at Camp Pendleton, I believe, in California is where we actually got Sarge. And on the way home, because we drove home, we stopped off in the Grand Canyon and took pictures. You know, Sarge was having a ball. He's a naughty little monkey, gets in lots of troubles. People fell in love with Sarge. And so we kept taking him to places. We took him to... NAS Pensacola, we took him to the USS Kid, we took him to several other different places. And then I'm like, you know, I think Sarge needs a brother. Well, my husband being the Navy senior chief is like, well, this one has to be named Chief. So I'm like, all right. So it ended up not being Sarge's little brother, it ended up being Sarge's bigger brother. Uh, the koala bear chief is a little bit bigger than Sarge. And so they're, they're pretty fun pair to have around. Like I said, they can get into places that kids normally aren't allowed to get into. And so it allows your child to just explore different places like the Grand Canyon, going in a cruise ship. Oh, we get into lots of sorts of fun in the cruise ship. Um, we took, like I said, we took the pictures. Um, Trevor even took them down the water slide and there's videos of them going down the water slide. And the people absolutely loved them. People got their pictures taken with Chief and Sarge. And if you go to the website under the Chief and Sarge tab, um, you can actually see a lot of the pictures. We actually took them to JJ's arm drop in the beginning of August. And so they got to meet all of JJ's, if anybody knows about the drag racing, it's the Memphis Street Outlaws. And they got their pictures taken with all the drag racers. And so we could be working on that one soon. We could be working on their first Christmas one soon. But the pictures that they take with people actually end up in the books themselves. So they get to have fun and they get to meet lots of cool people. Um, the book I'll be giving away today is The Adventures of Chief and Sarge Cruising. And as you can see, we have, like I said, lots and lots of fun in these. Um, 
for example, here's some where these are people that they actually met on the ships. And we actually went on cru two cruise cruises last year. One was November and one was in March. And right before COVID hit. <laughs> yeah. The maitre d', which is this picture right here, she, saw, she met us in the one in November and she remembered us when she saw us in March. And so she got her picture taken twice. So there was no way she was not getting in the book. <laughs> but we go into the different ports and they meet lots of people. Uh, for example, um, the passport guy actually signed the passport kids in stores that are selling stuff. And they just have, like I said, a lot of fun and enjoyment. Um, here's my favorite part is the water slide. That was all sorts of fun. So basically, like I said, Chief and Sarge um, was a happy accident. My family's not quite sure whether I'm sane or not <laughs> because we treat them like little kids. I mean, they have clothes. They okay, they came to Christmas last year. We all had to pose with them. They have little outfits. <laughs> they do. Chief fits in a three month outfit and Sarge fits in preemies which is difficult to find when you're traveling. So what we decided to do is you can actually find little dog shirts. And so we got them little dog shirts of like, I love Cancun. So, so yes, yeah, so when, when they're traveling and CJ's got them in her backpack and everything, you know, people, people stop and stare and laugh and they do have a good time. So it's like, you know. They get their pictures taken with them. And I know when we went to JJ's arm drop, JJ's son, Doughboy was so funny because we got his picture taken with him. Oh, Marie's back. Hi, Marie. Yay. We got their picture taken with him and I had him sign our t-shirts and he says, well, I was wondering, can I sign Sarge's t-shirt and Chief's t-shirt? So it was his idea. So we have him and JJ sign Sarge and Chief's shirts. And people love them. I mean, you might think I'm crazy, but we took over 50 cards with us on the cruise and they were all gone by the time we got home. Yep, yep, yep. that's all good. Well, okay. so. Um, it's time for a giveaway for CJ. So, um, we'll be giving away the Chief and Sarge Cruising signed autographed copy right here. Okay, so here's the question. And you can, is Sarge a koala or a monkey? Ooh, Sarge. A you know, we still haven't got an answer to yours either. I don't think so. So, uh, anywho, so that's, that's the, that's going to be, uh, that's, you. you got a 50, 50 chance. Yeah. Being right. So that's going to be, it's going to be the, uh, the big answer. Since no one answered Lydia's, I'm going to phrase a new question. What is the name of Lydia's illustrator? It was a very yeah. unique name. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right, so um, let's just move on so we can talk about Matthew's book. The reason why we're here. Yeah, I'm hoping you've got some graphics you can share, sister. Or do I need to? You need to. Okay, well, y'all chat amongst yourselves, and I'm going to pull them up on <laughs> my computer. <laughs> um, when Matthew first approached us about this book, I, I wanted to read it. Like I said, being a military kid, I thought, okay, let me see what the, let me see what he came up with. I absolutely fell in love with the illustrations. His illustrator did a wonderful job. They are adorable. But the concept behind it is what hooked me. Because it's not just the military spouses that are going through it when their other half goes to deployment. The kids do too, and they're not sure as to where mommy or daddy went. They just knew that they're gone for a couple months. And the concept behind the two socks, you know, yes, he's gone or she's gone, but you're still part of a pair. And when you get together, you can put that pair back together. And the concept of that just kind of spoke to my heart. So I really like that. Matthew, do you have any other ideas coming up for any other books? Um, yes, actually, um, <laughs> I just finished doing my rough draft of uh, the dad hat. Um, which I, I, I kind of got that from myself as well. Uh, I'm always wearing hats um, and I have a, a little one. He's uh, about to be five coming up um, next month. Um, and that book is really just uh, educating him on 
uh, the reason why people wear different hats, uh, whether it's religion for sports and things of that nature. Um, and I give him a good reason on why I wear my hat, um, which it, it's going to have a D um, sign on there. Um, and and that, end, that ending would end up being, um, I wear a D because that's the thing that I'm proudest of being is your dad. Um, so, so that's a little bit more heartfelt. Yeah, I, I write with a lot of emotion. Um, and I think this is the great, a great avenue where I can kind of express myself. Um, because when I was a kid, I didn't know how to express my emotion. I didn't know um, what people were going through. Um, and now that I've gotten older, um, I, I feel like I can be a voice for those children. I can let them read some of my books and let them have an idea like, hey, you know, mommy and daddy are deploying. Hey, mommy and daddy love you um, uh, and things of that nature. And, and um, the more ideas I'll gather is really just the more ideas um, I'll get from my son as he grows, um, my library will grow. Um, and, and he's just my, my biggest inspiration. Of course, I have my wife as my biggest support as well. Um, but everything that I, I do when I write um, stems from him, whether it be uh, the smallest or largest things. We'll get to that in just a second. I want to touch your Mommy Luke's library. Marie, since we actually have you here. <laughs> Hi. Sorry about that. I don't I know, know what happened, but. Can you tell us how you get your ideas for your books? Because I don't know that I heard that. Um, so for book one, the, um, the idea for book one came just because I wanted to write a book to help open the communication channels between children and their adults about bullying at school and on the playground and, and that kind of thing. Um, book two, Lola Hopscotch and the Spookaroo. Firstly, I wanted to write a kid's book during Halloween or like autumn, um, just because I have the best artist and I knew she was gonna just knock it out of the park. Um, but the idea for the message in that book is, um, helping other kids when they're lost or other kids when they're scared and making them feel comfortable. So this one was um, the kids played with the, the little lost kid until the lost mommy was found. So that's the, the message in the second book. The third book, um, there's a new kid, Lola Hopscotch. I know that you guys are military too, from the sounds of it, like maybe all of you guys are. And, um, my family, I, I have a lot of, of military background in my family too, but I did a lot of moving around when I was when I was little. And I wanted to write a book that might help little kids when they start at a new school. Um, it's for the kids that are already there to help the new little kid feel feel welcome. So, I love that. That's book three. <laughs> that's awesome. Yay. Um, okay, guys, seriously, we got to get these books away. So one more time for mine. <laughs> Is Chief a monkey or a koala? Literally have a 50-50 shot. Oh, it was, is Sarge a chief or is Sarge a monkey? Oh, you asked about Sarge. Okay. Is Sarge, Sarge a monkey or a koala? 50-50 shot, guys. <laughs> so. Okay, well, um, while they're doing that let me share the screen a bit so y'all just kind of like forgive all my um faux pas stuff here it's gonna be a little bit weird oh dun da 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 there is robin <laughs> the sock that went on deployment yay uh, yay that is adorable <laughs> is that not adorable and um I'm, I'm gonna, that's great and i love this dedication Aww. Look at that to my Aww. perfect pair. Now that and, is really sweet. Isn't that adorable? So you can see how, um, you know, Svetlana just captured the whole idea of, you know, this book and just made those illustrations adorable. So wow. I'm super, super excited for, for Matthew. Okay, Thank Lydia, you. your question needs to be easier. <laughs> <laughs> what are the names of the cats? <laughs> okay, what are the names of the cats in the Magic Cats book? Magic Cats, a blank, blank adventure. 
<laughs> We're trying, folks. Come on. Come with me. Can get you a okay, little Julie, bit of Christmas gift. Julie got yours. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Julie can have it. Julie, I already got your address. Don't worry about it. You got this one too. So you get cheap and Sarge as well. Good job. Yay, Julie. Woohoo. <laughs> Julie can have Christmas gifts. <laughs> Pretty have, much. As you're doing your Christmas shopping. Uh, that's awesome. So, um, so Matthew, um, tell us how you found Svetlana, your illustrator. Because as we talked about before, you know, that finding that just that right person, you know, whether, you know, our dad used to always say, I better be lucky than smart. You know, it's like, I mean, was it luck? Was it answered prayer? Was it all the above? Uh, yeah. Yours too, sorry. <laughs> Lynn, you look at yours too. She, Yay! She knows us now. She's paying attention. Yeah. Um, yeah, when, how I found uh, Svetlana, um, it was really just by luck. I, I was kind of just playing around with the cover photo, um, well, my, my, my book cover, and I really didn't know how my Robin looked. Um, uh, he was going to be my main character, so he had to be perfect, uh, but I really had no idea what perfect was. Um, so I went on, I believe, 99 Design, and, and I threw up a contest, um, and I, there was a lot of great illustrators on there, uh, a lot of great work, but hers stuck out to me just because it, it, it I don't know, it, it felt right. Um, so she finished working on my cover for me, um, and then I got her personal email, and we kind of chatted back and forth. Um, we had a little bit of struggle uh, at that time just because of the language barrier. Uh, I believe she's over there in Ukraine. Uh, and she's also in a different time zone as well. Um, so the long process was a little bit longer, uh, but of course it was worth the wait. Um, I, I gave up really horrible rough drafts and she absolutely did great on them. I mean, this is what she does. This is what she loves. And uh, she fell in love with the book as well. Uh, she's not military at all, but um, she found a good connection with me and, and my personal life. And, and um, like I said, she absolutely did a, an amazing job. That's, that's Robin on there um, on his dust bunnies headed to Lila. Yes, this is one of my favorite illustrations. <laughs> this is the, dust the, the help of his friends, yeah. dust bunnies. I just <laughs> died laughing when I saw it. Like, <laughs> I mean, just the, she just, she just, you guys clicked. I mean, it, you know, and that's the magic of when you're doing, illustrated children's book you you when you find that right illustrator it's like man magic right. happens <laughs> and and she did great um as i do as i progress and add more books to my catalog um i'm definitely going to go to her and um, let her whip up her magic because she she has an, a great idea on what style i like um and uh, she's she's just the best i mean i, I think every author kind of feels like their illustrator is and and I'm definitely going to vouch for mine. She's, it's she's like awesome. Kind of, you're kind of afraid to share it because you don't want <laughs> to have them too busy to do your stuff. You're like, it's so exclusive, right? Yeah. I don't I have an illustrator. Um, maybe you can, no, <laughs> you can't tell who it is. <laughs> I'm going to show you. I want love to them, but you kind of don't, because you don't want to right. be <laughs> She, you got to check this out. She oh, did. That's so cute. Yeah. She did this for the back of the book. Um, that is adorable. Yep. So yeah. I haven't yeah, seen she, that picture yet. That is so cute. Yeah, she made that probably about uh, a couple of weeks ago, and um, I said, you know, just just put a little something, uh, put put yourself on there. Um, you deserve uh, as much credit as I do. And uh, yet again, she she did perfect. Um, and you know, I love her for it. She's she's great. Yep. Okay, so now I do have another question, which we kind of touched a little bit on regarding your son. Um, hold on, actually, Julie has a question. She's not familiar with 99design. She's assuming it's like fiber with illustrators who are not too expensive. Is that right? Can you talk about 99design and the process of finding the illustrator through them? Um, well, I'm <laughs> sure. Yeah, um, 99design is kind of, I, I fell on that as well, too. I was kind of looking up um, uh, designs to, uh, for a book and 99design, uh, that ad kind of popped up and I clicked it. Um, and it's exactly what she said. Um, what you do is you put up a contest for however much money you, you want to put up. Um, and you'll have all these illustrators come in from around the world and, and they'll uh, put their uh, bid, so to speak, uh, which being their artwork 
um, and you pick the, the, the perfect one. And if there's not a perfect one, you do another contest. And um, I really like it just because it can be kind of hard to reach a specific artist because even though their art might be great, it might not be great for you. Um, so that's why I wanted a, a nice variety of everything just so I can pick out, hey, who does the best work uh, for my idea? And um, like I said, I fell across uh, Svetlana and uh, she did great. Um, and 99 Design is a really great uh, outlet to find uh, people like that. Um, and it's a great way to really just connect with people because now I could say I have a friend over there in Ukraine, you know? Yeah, actually mine is from over there as well, but mine I got through Fiverr. Fiverr is a little bit different. Fiverr, you actually go in and search children's book illustrators and you kind of just go through and find the one that you like and then you contact them. Um, and my initial illustrator was not the one who did the book. Um, my biggest pet peeve is people who don't communicate or people who are late. And so those are like my two top when it comes to, especially when it comes to like designers and stuff, people that are working for me, because if I can be on time, you can be on time. Um, if I can keep you updated communication wise, you can do the same for me. And she didn't. And so I moved on and I'm glad I did because Waleed Ahmad does, like I said, he does a brilliant job. He always lets me know what's going on. I let him know up front. Um, that communication was strong with me. And so he does, and he still actually communicates with me. He's like, how you doing? How's the book going? Sort of thing. And you, you, you make, you create a bond with them. You make friends and yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. Um, I found a, I found a, an like, illustrator. And then you um, for uh, just a little title page I needed um, for our Christmas anthology. Um, and I'm not going to give away what it is because it's so fun. But I found her um, on Fiverr um, and she's, uh, she's in South Korea and she, she, she nailed exactly what I described to her. Um, I've seen it. It's cute. <laughs> it's adorable. And so, um, and then, you know, but now that I know about 99 design, um, you know, I may do that at some point um, for one of my books down the road. Um, you know, Ollie Oliver is, he's my man for Magic Cats. He's, you know, um, for the Ramses and Ted Adventures. He and I want to eventually have a whole series of these. Um, and I told him, I was like, dude, we got to sell enough books by the fifth book that we can fund your daughter's college fund. And he's like, I like the way you think. And I said, we want to be chasing Pete the Cat and Dr. Seuss and all of those people. <laughs> we want to chase them. I don't have to beat Pete the Cat. I can just be Pete the Cat's best friend. There you go. <laughs> um, I do want to talk to you about something. On your website, you have something that's called Luke's Library. Can you explain to them what that is? All right. So uh, Luke's Library, uh, named after my son. Um, it, it's kind of like his library. Um, so when I do end up writing more books, um, it's going to be kind of like an, an area where you can go to see all uh, Luke's library. Um, and of course, as he grows, the library will grow as well. Um, and, and it's really just, uh, uh, in a way, it's, it's my own series, but in, a, in its own way. Um, so yeah, Luke's library, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be uh, hopefully big uh like Lydia was saying uh, I'm trying to be I'm trying to you know be best friends with uh Dr. Seuss and, and Pete the Cat I, I want to be I want people to to see my name and say hey this, you know this one um he has great stories and um and I and I hope I I hope I do have good stories um that's yeah that's him right there that's actually him as well with his uh shoes those are his blippy shoes that he likes um <laughs> Um, and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great little area where, like I said, he can, you can kind of just see what kind of, uh, genres I, I write and, uh, different kind of styles. Um, I'm actually writing up another one, uh, it'll probably be ready next, uh, winter. Uh, it's about an ugly sweater, about how uh, they have an ugly sweater party and how that originated from. Um, I, I didn't want to rush it for this season because of course I'm, I'm, uh, having this one launched. Um, but yeah, it's hopefully I can uh, write to middle aged kids, uh, middle school, high school. Uh, like I said, the sky's the limit for my son and, and the sky's the limit for me as well. Just as long as he reads my books and he's the only one that enjoys them, 
that's all that matters. Um, but it'd be great for everyone else to enjoy it as well, because I know someone out there will. Mm -hmm. That's Speaking awesome. Of somebody out there enjoying your books. Um, I think we have time for one more. It's a quarter till. So I think we're going to do the big giveaway. Do you happen to have a copy of it handy to show everybody? Yeah. <laughs> the sock yeah. that went on deployment. Yay! Sorry, I couldn't put it as my green screen. I, I don't know how to do that, but... <laughs> So I'll give you that pad one. I shall teach you. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> we'll get there. We, we, we take care of other marketing stuff, but we'll get there. <laughs> um, so the sock that went on deployment, you guys have seen it. You guys have heard it. I know you know the answer to this question. For an autographed copy of the sock that went on deployment, what are the names of the two socks main characters in the book? There are two. What are they? Julie's probably gonna win this one too. It'll be for the well, I would say trifecta, but what's she's already got the trifecta? She's got all three of us. Trifecta or whatever, whatever you call that. <laughs> but um, no, you know, I as you can tell, the this book is delightful, and I think Matthew's message um, through this book about staying connected, family. And staying Garcia connected, got it. Yay! Um, you know, family staying connected during a deployment um, is so important. Um, you know, our family, when we, when, when we had somebody in the Persian Gulf, it was our nephew. He was a helicopter pilot at the time. And, um, you know, he's a grown man. <laughs> and we right. still were like, you know and, and as matthew knows it's like every once in a while you can send a very short email or you can mm -hmm. get a very short phone call in so like you know the whole family you know we had everybody on group text you know <laughs> um we did we yeah. did Chris, we did christmas it's, it's, in october that year so, yeah, exactly, you know yeah. and so um, and so I can't even imagine what it would be like to be a parent away from a child and then for that for that little one, you know, um, some of our friends that we've known that have, have had deployed spouses and, and you know, all that they've, they've made uh, cardboard versions of their spouse and <laughs> <laughs> or you know, yeah. and, I've seen those, and I've seen those little teddy bears, you know, that they make and they put like the little you know, army uniform or navy uniform or whatever. Right. And it's, you know, the daddy bear or the mommy bear. You know, or whatever. But you know, I, I, I like the sock because they can create a pair of socks and actually turn them into sock puppets. Yeah, right. and make their own. Right. So you know, I just I, I just fell in love with that whole message and um, you know, and and like you know, like I said, once CJ and I saw the book, we're like, oh oh yeah, we we gotta we gotta get this one. Um, out there and we gotta we gotta do it before Christmas <laughs> uh, yep um so the big winner tonight is Julie Connor um <laughs> she won all three of ours mine Marie's and Lydia's Lynn Garcia won Matthew Martinez's Lynn please private message me your address I'll pass it on to Matthew so that he can get your book out to you a um, couple things to check out Matthew, your website is author M Martinez. Yes, that and is then it. you just click on Luke's library to get your own copy of the book. For those who that is correct, it. yeah. Um, you can find mine at cjpetersonwrites.com. If you're looking for the Chief and Sarge, simply look for the Chief and Sarge tab. Lyd Lydia's is at manwrites.com, and she has a wide variety of them. Marie's is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's uh, these ones are at lolahopscotch.com. What is it again? Lolahopscotch.com. Lolahopscotch.com. And if, if y'all will pardon me for doing a, a plug for just a second, um, for the month of October, I have teamed up with a animal shelter here in the in Plano, Texas, which where it's, where I live. It's called Second Chance SPCA, <laughs> and um, that's where we got Ramsey's and Tut's little sisters. Um, and so if you go to manrights.com, you'll see there's a, a fundraising page for the Second Chance SPCA, and you can get an autographed copy of Magic Cats um, or uh, The Nightmare King, 
or you can order a t-shirt with a really cool design on the front with Ramsey's and Tut and Second Chance SPCA on the back. And the proceeds go to um, Second Chance SPCA. So for just for the month of October. So if you love little kitties and you love little puppy dogs um, and you need a book for a kid or for yourself. A uh, couple more little plugs. In the month of November for Christmas time for your little ones, for those who didn't win the books, the paperback version of Ramsey's and Tut and the paperback version of Chief and Sarge's Cruising will be $9.99. You can find the link on TexasSistersPress.com. Um, also on there for the bigger people to enjoy, we're going to have our very first holiday anthology with 11 authors writing short stories all combined into one. So we're super excited with that. We're getting that one ready to go as well. So check underneath the Christmas specials tab on texassisterspress.com. If you're interested in Matthew's stuff and you haven't quite found him yet, go to Texas Sisters Press under the TSP authors page and you will find his handy dandy little bio in there along with how to find him online. Um, Matthew, congratulations. We are super, super excited for you. Um, hopefully there'll be lots more books to come in the future for Luke's library to get bigger and bigger. Marie, yeah. thank you so much for coming on and thank you so much yeah. for bringing a little hopscotch to yeah. people and for donating a book as well. Um, any last words from anybody? Just everybody stay in touch, follow everybody. Um, you know, the um, children's books are they're the key to getting kids excited about reading and and also it's that spoonful of sugar that makes the medicine go down so um <laughs> you know so let's uh let's all share 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 and support um your local libraries and your local authors and all that stuff because um you know we got to get kids reading books it's important definitely a reader when they're young makes a reader when they're older amen you know? Have, have your kid be that little kid that, like me, was hiding under the cover with a flashlight reading until yeah. midnight, one o'clock. <laughs> so, anyway, congratulations, Matthew. Woo! We're so excited. Ooh, for you. Yay, uh, yay! You are officially a published author. <laughs> this is his debut book, so super excited for you and many more things to come. Marie will be looking for the next book for Lola Hopscotch. Yes. Love your book. Uh, parents, if you're tired at night, and I understand that fact, go to cjpetersonwrites.com under the Treehouse tab and find a book to cuddle up with your kid, and I will read them along with Chief and Sarge, and you can enjoy them together. Um, in the meantime, thank everybody who has been here, who enjoyed watching. Congratulations, Julie Connor, and congratulations, Lynn Garcia. And we'll catch you next time around on the next one. Bye. Bye.